Hello there, and welcome to the Nutrition Diva Podcast. I'm your host, Monica Reinagel, and today we're talking about how probiotic bacteria affect your immune function, and whether probiotic foods or supplements are safe for people with compromised immune function. And then, hungry girl Lisa Lillian is back with another kitchen hack that can help you get more vegetables into your day, and also save you some calories along the way. So stay tuned for that after today's main topic. Today's episode is supported by Larabar. Larabar is made with just a handful of real ingredients like unsweetened fruits, whole nuts, spices, and sometimes a little delicious chocolate. There are over 20 flavors, including cherry pie, chocolate chip cookie dough, and lemon bar, so you can fight off hunger and satisfy your sweet tooth. Find Lara Bar nationwide at your local grocery store, Target, Walmart, or on Amazon. And explore all of their fun flavors at larabar.com. Lara Bar, it's food made from food. Noreen recently emailed me to ask, could you do a podcast on probiotic foods that one should avoid if one has a compromised immune system? Is commercial yogurt okay since it's pasteurized? And what about kombucha, homemade sauerkraut, pickles, and hot sauces? Before I answer Noreen's questions, let's first just talk quickly about how probiotic food might affect the immune system. Well, one of the immune system's jobs, of course, is to protect us from harmful bacteria. And the beneficial organisms that we refer to as probiotics contribute to this effort in a number of ways. In the gut, a robust population of beneficial bacteria can help crowd out harmful bacteria, making it harder for them to thrive. And in addition, probiotic bacteria can influence the activity of our own immune cells, regulating inflammation, barrier function, and cell-to-cell signaling. One way to foster that healthy intestinal bacteria is to eat more of the foods that these bugs like to eat, namely fiber. Increasing your intake of plant fibers from vegetables, fruits, legumes, whole grains, nuts, and seeds is kind of like filling a bird feeder with the kind of seeds that the beautiful songbirds that you want to attract like best. If you feed them, they will come. And if we want to attract a lot of different types of songbirds, I mean bacteria, then we want to put out a variety of foods. That means you don't want to just get your fiber from a single source, like a fiber supplement. You want to get fiber from lots of different kinds of vegetables, fruits, legumes, grains, nuts, and seeds. Now, another way to nurture a healthy gut is to consume foods that contain those beneficial bacteria, and that includes things like yogurt, kefir, and other cultured dairy products, kimchi, sauerkraut, and other fermented vegetables, miso, tempeh, natto, and other fermented soy products, and kombucha, which is a sort of fermented tea, and you'll find episodes on all of those foods in the Nutrition Diva archives. Now, to be honest... It's not entirely clear how many of those bacteria actually survive their trip through the digestive tract and set up permanent housekeeping in the gut. But even if they are just passing through, they appear to be the ideal type of house guest, the kind that leaves the place a bit better than they found it. Now, there's a third way to introduce beneficial bacteria to the gut, and that is through a probiotic supplement but this is probably my least favorite option. Aside from persistent concerns about whether those supplements contain what they're supposed to contain and don't contain anything that they're not supposed to contain, most supplements provide a relatively narrow selection of specific bacteria. And the thing to understand is that the different strains of beneficial bacteria have very different effects in the body. One might tend to help prevent diarrhea. Another might help prevent constipation. Another might have benefits for your skin. Or another might help reduce certain respiratory infections. And frankly, some of them really haven't been shown to have specific benefits at all. But if a certain strain of bacteria has been shown to have a certain positive effect, That's really the only benefit that you can reasonably expect from it. So if you're after a certain benefit, you need to carefully match your supplement to the research that shows that benefit. If, on the other hand, you're just looking for overall gut health, I still think you're better off eating more prebiotic, that is, fiber-rich foods, and enjoying a variety of cultured and fermented foods. 
Now, before I turn to Noreen's questions about whether probiotic foods and supplements are safe for people with low immune function, let me pause to thank this week's sponsors. Today's episode was supported by OpenFit. If you need some fit inspiration, OpenFit makes getting fit easier than it's ever been. This is a brand new, super simple streaming service that allows you to work out from home in as little as 10 minutes a day from any device. And it's great for all fitness levels. It's also affordable and accessible. I love their 600 second series, the 10 minute workouts that pack the benefits of much longer sessions into a fraction of the time. To get started on a fitness journey personalized just for you, just text my code DIVA to the number 303030. Right now, during the OpenFit 30-Day Challenge, my listeners get a special extended 30-day free trial membership. So just text the word DIVA to the number 303030, and you'll get full access to all of OpenFit's workouts for free. That's the code DIVA to 303030. Standard message and data rates may apply. And are you dreaming of a beach vacation this summer? Well, start planning your escape to Panama City Beach, Florida. Imagine spending your days doing the things you love, all in a setting of sugar white beaches and turquoise waters. Discover endless family fun, heart-pounding thrills, eco-adventure, and romance. Make it memorable. You can get up close to dolphins in their natural habitat on a boat tour or go paddleboarding. Make it exhilarating. Find your thrills flying on a jet ski, kayaking at sunset, or snorkeling in turquoise waters. It's everything an adrenaline junkie lives for. Make it incredible. Bike along the beach, take an airboat tour, or explore the secluded beauty of two state parks. And make it special with a romantic getaway. Relax and reconnect with dining on the beach, breathtaking sunsets, and enough live music to dance the night away. So make it yours. Make it Panama City Beach, your real fun beach. Plan your escape now at visitpanamacitybeach.com. And now let's talk about the safety of probiotics for various populations. Although their benefits may be limited, probiotic supplements are generally safe for healthy people. Occasionally, a probiotic supplement might produce side effects such as gas or diarrhea or, in rare cases, skin itching or rashes. These are generally not serious and they are reversed when you stop taking the supplement. But there are some situations where beneficial bacteria, either from foods or supplements, can pose a threat to the host. That's us. Acute illnesses such as pancreatitis or a flare-up of Crohn's, colitis, or celiac disease can lead to increased intestinal permeability. As we've discussed in the podcast recently, this doesn't mean that bacteria or toxins leak out of the gut and into the bloodstream, but it may mean that bacteria, including probiotic bacteria, penetrate the lining of the gut far enough to kick up a big inflammatory reaction from the immune cells that are standing sentry there. And if your gut is already inflamed, that's the last thing you need. People with compromised immunity, either from a severe illness or sometimes due to medical treatment for a disease, are also frequently advised to avoid probiotic foods and supplements. Studies have found that using probiotics in severely ill or immunocompromised individuals can increase the risk of adverse side effects, including infections. And now we're finally ready to tackle Noreen's questions. She asked which foods you might need to avoid if you have a compromised immune system. In particular, she wondered whether commercial yogurt would be okay since it says on the label that it's pasteurized. Now, this is a common misunderstanding. Pasteurization, which kills all bacteria, would also kill beneficial bacteria. And that's why the milk that's used in commercial yogurt is pasteurized before the bacteria are added to make the yogurt. So commercial yogurt does contain live bacteria, as does kefir, kombucha, and any other probiotic food that indicates that it contains live and active cultures. As to whether these are safe to eat, it's really hard to make a blanket statement about quote-unquote people with compromised immune systems as this can encompass such a wide range of situations. It would really depend on the degree of immune suppression and the nature of the illness or the treatment or therapy. The National Institutes of Health says that the people who are at most risk of severe side effects include critically ill patients, 
those who have had surgery, very sick infants, and people with weakened immune systems. The situation with probiotic supplements, as opposed to foods, is even a little more complex. Patients receiving certain kinds of cancer therapies, for example, often suffer from diarrhea, and that's one of the conditions that often responds well to specific probiotic supplements. However, researchers at MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston recently reported that in a small group of patients receiving immunotherapy, a specific type of cancer treatment, those who were taking probiotic supplements were less likely to respond to the treatment. So if you are receiving cancer treatment, be sure to discuss your use of probiotics or really any supplements at all with your healthcare team. Noreen also asked about homemade sauerkraut and other fermented foods. And indeed, there's been a veritable explosion of home fermentation in recent years. And given the fact that the yeast in some of these fermented foods gives off carbon dioxide, there have been more than a few literal explosions as well. Home fermentation can be a fun way to introduce more probiotic foods into your diet, but whether you're brewing your own kombucha or fermenting your own pickles or culturing your own yogurt, it's a lot harder to control exactly which bacteria you're cultivating. Home-produced products are likely to contain a much wider variety of strains than a commercial product. And some of those will be beneficial. Some may simply add flavor, and that can be either good or bad. But there is also a risk of incubating a pathogenic bacteria or two along with those good guys. In a healthy person, that might lead to an uncomfortable night in the john. But for someone with a compromised immune system, it could be more dangerous. So even if your doctor gives the okay to consume commercial yogurt, it might be best to steer clear of those homemade products if you're not in good health. And even if you are in excellent health, home fermenters are well advised to be very scrupulous about sanitation and safe food handling. Thanks to Noreen for her question. If you have a topic or a question that you think would make a good topic for a podcast episode, you can call the Nutrition Diva listener line and leave me a message. The phone number is 443-961-6206. I'd love to hear from you. And now Hungry Girl is here to share another of her kitchen hacks. But before we turn it over to Lisa, I'll let you know that you'll find a complete transcript of today's discussion of probiotic foods and supplements, along with links to some of the research that I mentioned and several related podcasts that's all on our website at nutritiondiva.quickanddirtytips.com. And if you'd like to find out more about my nutrition coaching programs and groups, head on over to nutritionovereasy.com, where you can sign up to get updates, invitations, and special offers. And now let's hear what hungry girl Lisa Lillian has cooked up for us today. Take it away, Lisa. Hey, Nutrition Diva listeners. Have you fallen in love with cauliflower yet? It is so great. It's such a fun, delicious, low-calorie substitute for starchy carbs, things like potatoes and, of course, rice. Now, cauliflower rice only has 25 calories a cup. That's a fraction of the calories in regular rice. So it's really easy to rice your own cauliflower, too. The biggest mistake that people make is to start with pieces of cauliflower that are too big. So chop your cauliflower nicely and add it to the blender and then pulse it until you have rice-sized pieces. It's easy. Now, you may need to stop and stir occasionally in order to finish the job, but it really is very simple. And if you're feeling super lazy, you can just pick up some already riced cauliflower at your local market. It'll be in the freezer section or the produce section, so you can get it fresh or frozen. And once you have your cauliflower rice, you probably want to know what to do with it, right? So check out my website, hungry-girl.com, and my new book, Hungry Girl Simply Six. There are so many cauliflower rice recipes in there. Be sure to check out Lisa's podcast, Chew the Right Thing, where I also stop by occasionally to answer nutrition questions from Lisa and her crew. That's Chew the Right Thing wherever you get your podcasts. Our show was written and researched by me, Monica Reinagel, edited by Karen Hertzberg, produced by Nathan Sems, and our team at Macmillan Audio also includes Michelle Margulis, Morgan Ratner, Emily Miller, and Michaela Prell. Thanks so much for listening. I'll be back next week to talk about what to look for in a protein bar. Subscribe to the Nutrition Diva podcast so that you're sure not to miss that one. Have a great week. Bye.